and welcome back to another episode of The Conversation. I'm Nubri Atto. The Conversation, we're talking to different candidates who are running for office, and I'm joined with a very good friend of mine. We go way back. I mean, I'm 34. I think you've been knowing me since I was a little pup. Way back. Yeah. <laughs> we're joined with um, City Councilor for Ward 1, Tom Nicello. Um Tom, first and foremost, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's, it's nice of you to do this for everybody. Listen, you know, it, it's... Public service is not for the weak, and what you guys are doing is is, um, is honorable. It, it really is. So, uh, you know, I, I commend all you guys. Um, so, City Council Award 1, um, you're at school committee for years, and you moved up to the city council as your first term. For people who don't know Tom Minicello, who is Tom? Um, and, and kind of talk about your platform. Sure. I'm, I grew up here in the city of Brockton. Um, I grew up on the east side of Brockton. Went to East, it was East Junior High at the time. Graduated Brockton High School, 83. Uh, went to BU, then went to Vermont Law, uh, came back. Um, well, always lived in Brockton. Basically, it was my residence. You know, when I was in school, I lived at school, but you know, R Brockton was my residence, mm -hmm. and it is my residence. Um, I um, you know joined the school committee uh, 14 years ago, and then ran for city council two years ago. So, 16 years of public service, uh, looking to be elected if the voters want me. The voters will let you know whether they want you or not. Right, right. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, I've tried to do a good job with the schools uh, for 14 years. I was vice chair for 10 years. Um, and um, we had an interesting time. We had budgets that were very uh, challenging, let's put it that way. And we, um, you know, tried to prioritize kids and activities for kids to make sure the kids had what they needed, but also make sure that there was there were activities for the kids. You know, a lot of the kids... Um, to get them to go to school, they need, you know, band, they need athletics, they need, you know, the arts. That's the carrot that gets the kids to school. Right. So as a city councilor, I want to make sure that we're properly funded um, so that the, that the schools have what they need. And, um, you know, right now, you know, we're in a challenging time with the schools, obviously. Um, as a city councilor, I, um, you know, my constituency is now broader than representing just parents and students. Mm -hmm. It's... It's you know parents and students, but of people that don't have kids in school, and also you know people that care about other issues. Um, you said, "What's my platform?" Well, my platform is basically responsible government. Um, it's providing services for the people. Um, you know, people in Broughton want what ev everyone else wants. They want clean streets. They want they want um, safe streets. They want opportunity. They want good schools, they want um, property values to remain up. They also want affordable housing. Um, so it's, it's across the gamut. They want services to be provided to them. They, they don't want to be, um, they don't want to be um, feeling like they're putting, you, you're putting them out, you're putting government out by doing what they're supposed to do. Government's supposed to answer to the people. Government is supposed to respond to the people. Government is supposed to get the job done. And, and that's what I'm all about, making sure that government is accountable, making sure that we have enough resources. With the city council, we're in charge of the uh, checks and balances of the money. So you know, we need to make sure that the money is being spent on what it's supposed to be spent for, and um, making sure that the people are provided with the services they need. You know, People in Broughton, they don't want to walk down the street and see weeds growing up down the street, you know, through the streets. They don't want to see people living under bridges with mattresses and defecating and urinating. It, it gives a bad image to Brockton. Um, when I was growing up and when you were growing up, Brockton was a powerhouse. We were a powerhouse of athletics, education, facilities. I mean, when I went to Brockton High, it had everything. You know, we had a planetarium. No one had a planetarium. We had a pool. No one had a pool. We had a, a skating rink on site. No, we had the first turf uh, football, football field. field. Yep. You know, and now we need to make sure that Brockton has what it needs. Um, you know, Brockton's always been a, a, um, a community of immigrants. It's just a matter of where people are coming from. Um, and, you know, things change. People need to realize that things change. And, you know, for instance, soccer, right? We have so many cultures that come to Brockton that love soccer. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. So we, we need to adapt. You know, we need to adapt. We need to... I'm working, <coughs> you said, like, what's an accomplishment? Well, here's a big accomplishment. I'm working to renovate the Ash Street Playground with the mayor. And, um, you know, there's a, a Little League baseball field there. 
doesn't get a heck of a lot of use. So what am I doing? I'm working with the Parks Department and Tim Carpenter to have that a multi-use field, to have it be used for soccer as well as you know, softball or baseball because it's not being used. I mean, people in that park love that park and we're going to improve it. We're going to clean it up. We're getting new equipment for the kids. You know, it's, it's rusty. It needs to be redone. We're um, putting in some fencing. We're putting in um, some uh, dis playground equipment for disabled children. There's a lot of disabled children in, in the city and, you know, certainly in my ward, but, you know, for everybody. So yeah. that playground is going to look really nice. And, and that's a really big accomplishment. That should be done in the spring. So I'm, I'm really proud that that's going to be something that the people and the kids are going to like. And adults are going to like it too because there's going to be equipment for exercise equipment for adults. Sort of like gymnastic equipment that they can right. really, you know, do at, uh, calisthenics and push ups and pull ups and all sorts of stuff. Tom, what, what's, what's the, uh, a, a pressing issue that you're seeing in Ward 1 that you kind of want to. Um, you know, help tackle for the next up upcoming uh, two years. And I do want to get your opinion. I, I know it's kind of in Ward 3, kind of it's Ward 3, 2, and 1, the, the Broughton Fairgrounds. We'll see Ward well, 3. Well, that's, that's the big issue. Yeah. The development of the fairgrounds. because So let's talk about the development. Do you, do you agree with, with, with um, purchasing the, the, the fairgrounds and, and putting uh, different businesses in there? What are your thoughts on that? I agree that we should, we should, we should develop it. I'm not... I'm not positive yet whether we should front all the money for it. Um, it needs to be developed in a way that's going to work for Brockton because Belmont Street is Main Street today in Brockton. And we need to make sure that um, we don't do something or allow something in there that's going to make Belmont Street worse than it is. Belmont Street's very busy. The high school's there. The buses are there. The buses, as you know, as we all know, when Brockton High lets out, the buses are a major issue, let's put it that way. So we can't allow the development to do something that's going to make it worse. But what we want to do is to make it work for everybody and, and have, it, you know, have it be, I think, multi-use. Mm -hmm. Like down in the Hanover area, they're putting in like a multi-use development where the Hanover Mall was. They're putting in some housing. They're putting in stores, they're putting in businesses. So you could have like a, an insurance agency or a law office or accountant on the second floor, let's say, of these uh, you know, businesses, uh, you know, of, of um, you know, merchandise places, you know, um, whatever, whatever the business may be. It, it could be selling hair products, it could be selling uh, stereos, it could be selling computers, whatever. It could be selling clothing. But above that, they'll have different businesses, um, professional businesses, but then inter intermingled in that is going to be housing. So everyone has a stake in, in, in the development and it's going to be you know, multi-use. So there'll be people you know, using that property 24-7. And that's what you want, eyes and ears. So that you know, the people are vested in making sure it remains, remains nice, you know? I, I do want to touch upon this issue. You know, I the issue is the $14 million, and you know, that, that's the big issue the last couple of weeks. Um, if you haven't heard about it, you've know, been probably living inside a rock. Yeah, really. But, um, but the city council just recently met with the school committee. Um, just talk about, it, was, are there some vetting processes the city council could do? Because as I mentioned in previous interviews for other candidates, superintendents presents the budget to the school committee. School committee, um, you know, as you know, you're the chair, you know, approves a, approves a budget, then the city council approves it on, on their end. Was there a miss process on the vetting on the city side or on the school side where we, they could work better together for something that won't happen? What, what, what was the issue? What, I, what was I the vetting that, process? I think things can always work better. Mm -hmm. um, How do we do that? Well, let's go back for a second. The budget for the schools is the responsibility of the school committee. They formulate the budget with the superintendent they send it over to the city side, we review it, we make some changes to it. But once they get the money, it's theirs to manage. It's their responsibility to, to abide by what they said they were going to do and what they were going to spend it on. So you need, you need monitoring by the school committee. And it's managed by the administrators. They're the experts. They're supposed to be the experts to show you 
what we're spending it on and why we're spending it this way. And, but the school committee's got to basically look at the, they're in charge of the safe, so to speak. Now, the city side can involve itself more if um, the proper ordinances are put in. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to look at what the city side now can do or should do to help to help supervise things. Not to point fingers, not to um, cast blame, but to help the checks and balances, to make sure that... Some more safeguards and vetting yeah, processes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the people over there are my friends. They're good people. You know, we need to work together to make sure to see what happened, how it happened, what we can do to make things better. And you know, we're all willing to do that. You know, to have people, you know, criticizing each other and throwing people under the bus, it's not going to accomplish anything. And that's not who Brockton is. But basically, Brockton is, we get it done, we work together. And that's, what, you know, that's how I've always, I've always looked at it, and that's how I'm going to look at it. When the voters go to the ballot box on November 7th, Mm -hmm. Why, Tom Manichello, why should they give you a uh, shot of re-election? Well, I'm, I'm a guy that's a Brocktonian. I never left. I am. I love this city. You know, a lot of my friends have left. A lot of friends of yours have left. Um, I, enjoy the, I enjoy the differences between people. I get bored with the same old thing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's like, um, it's a great place. It, it's in Brockton, you know, we... Nothing's perfect, but I think we people get along here. I think people got along when I was a kid, and I think that people want to get along now. I think people really enjoy, you know, the differences amongst people, and people are people, you know. Um, if you're a jerk, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are, you're a jerk. If you're a nice person, it doesn't matter where you come from, you're a nice person, you know I mean? So that's what I like about Brockton. People judge you on your the way you treat people, the way you behave. And uh, I think that Brockton is a place that I love. I love the location of Brockton. I mean, come on. Boston's 25 minutes away. The Cape's 25 minutes away. Yeah. Worcester, I mean, Providence. So I think that um, this is the place that I love. This is the place I've served. I'll continue to serve if the people want me to. And if not, I'm sure I can find something else to occupy my time. <laughs> but, um, but I like what I do. I like the new challenges with the city council. It's more diverse, it's more broad, as opposed to sort of the schools, you know, so I mean, you know, limited, so. So listen, I, I think the one thing we could take a positive thing about this, what's going on in Broughton the last couple months is that there's interest now. And hopefully that can get people to the ballot box, you know, <laughs> and, and, and get a little more, um, a little more energy um, in, in, in terms of that. And, but Tom, I just want to thank you. We, we got about um, a little minute left. So I want to thank you for joining us thank you. on this podcast. You've been a public servant for, I mean, how many years now? You said 12 on the... Well, uh, it'll be, this will, be, if I'm elected, this will be 17 and 18. Wow. So, you know, 14 on the school committee, two on the city council, and you know, hoping to serve the, the residents of Ward 1 in Brockton as a counselor. I like what I do, and I like the people, and I like the community, and I'm willing to work, and I've always been willing to work, and I've always been pretty approachable and easy to talk to from for the constituents, and I'll continue to be who I am. Tom, thank you for joining us. I know uh, we've been on a couple of boards together. We're so we've also on the Brock Community Access Board. Um, and you know, that, that's definitely, you know, we've gotten to know each other the last couple of years for that. Well, we should the best of luck, and we wish all candidates the best of luck. So that is it for the conversation. Uh, again, um, Ward 1 City Council candidate Tom Minicello. Um, want well, to just encourage everyone who is uh, listening right now, um, continue to subscribe to our YouTube page, subscribe to our podcast, um, like us on Facebook, Nui Productions. And also, if you're interested in um, supporting our next documentary, please go to our website, and uh, you could, you're more than willing to uh, click on that donate button to support our, our next documentary. Um, we would more than appreciate that. Well, that is it for the conversation. We'll be back with more candidates after this. <laughs>